Welcome back to the Money and Wealth Show. I'm Sterling Fox in conversation with this week's special guest, renowned cynical optimist and financial observer, Victor Adair. Victor, it's always good to have a chat with you. As we, and we've talked about recovery and uh, people beginning globally to feel a little bit better about uh, economic prospects or long-term uh, prospects. Here in Canada, we're blessed with feeling perhaps a little more buoyant than many other places on the planet. Mm -hmm. How are you approaching recovery and how would you counsel clients or former clients in your case to approach the recover? recovery, pardon me. Well, what I'm doing in my own personal world, you know, I, I used to uh, advise clients both as a broker and as a portfolio manager. Uh, these days, I just handle my own affairs. Uh, I divide my financial world into two parts. I have my savings and then I have my trading accounts. My savings, I have remained very conservative, very liquid. Uh, I have obviously left money on the table by doing that doesn't bother me. Uh, I think it has truly been an era of the return of my money rather than the return on my money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, it's not like I'm just you know hiding under a rock and waiting for doomsday. With my other part of my money, my trading accounts, I'm very actively involved in currency markets, other derivative markets. That's what I've done my whole life. And uh, that keeps me sharp, I keep paying attention to what's going on. Um, and you know, I managed to make a, a little bit of money there as well. I think I've been so conservative because, um, well, you know, just, just perhaps of, of what I saw as we went through the fall of 08. That was scary. Um, the Wall Street collapse, et cetera. Right? Well, yeah, you just didn't know what was going to happen Absolutely. next. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I had known for a number of years, you know, that there had been a huge buildup of debt. And it used to kind of puzzle me. Then, wow, we've strapped on all this debt, but then I would have this imaginary balance sheet in my mind. But we've got all these assets, and the assets just keep going up in price, so it's okay. But somehow I was suspicious of it. And then when the bubble popped, as it were, and, and it really got um, scary for a while, uh, I've just decided that that debt is still out there. And at some degree, that debt is not going to get repaid. Either, you know, there'll just be defaults. You know, people will hand their keys back to the guy that gave them the mortgage. Or there will be inflation generated so that you've lent a dollar to somebody and you're going to get paid back a dollar. But when you get paid back, it's only worth 12 cents, you know, in terms of purchasing power. Right. Uh, or perhaps, you know, the, the, the governments are going to be faced with having to break some of their promises. And for folks our age, maybe they, you know, they just bump the old age pension check period. You, know, you have to be 75 before you collect. You know, or there'll be a means test like my grandparents used to talk about. They, there just seems to be so many things that have been promised to so many people that are going to cost so much money that it's not all going to get delivered. So I'm just I'm happy to stay kind of liquid and be able to maybe pick my spots. And by the way, that means not necessarily just stay in Canada, look at opportunities outside of Canada. Of course, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's it, it's been an, an innate sense of caution. I've left money on the table by not jumping into the stock market. I understand that, but I don't feel bad about that. All right, well, let me, let me just follow up on that, because you've said something that's tremendously appealing to a lot of our viewers, and that's you're being very conservative with your personal savings. That yeah. portion of your... Uh, empire financially that you've decided to <laughs> yeah. set aside right. for Victor's future. Right. How are you being conservative? What are you doing with, uh, with those savings dollars? Are you buying GICs? Are you buying treasuries? Are you just putting it in the bank and letting 2% interest roll up in a savings account? Which I doubt very much, knowing you as no, I do. No, 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 I, I have that. I have uh, probably f uh, a good financial planner would tell me I've got far too much money just in cash. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me. You know, I've been able to, to save enough money that uh, I, you know, I've got more than enough to live on. It, it doesn't matter that I'm not squeezing every last opportunity out of every last dollar. So I've been very conservative. And, you know, there may come a time when, when I will shift that and become more aggressive. And I will probably find out when it's time to become more aggressive with what I'm doing in my trading accounts, where I really have my finger on the pulse of what's going on in the world. Now, you were talking about bonds earlier when I asked you about uh, perhaps looking at areas in the economy right now 
that are going to happen in the next 18 to 24 months. And you said you've got your eye on a couple of bonds. Bonds have always been thought of as terribly boring and very safe. Do you have some of your savings uh, in bonds? No. Uh, well, when I was talking about bonds, I'd be looking to sell them short. Okay. Uh, because okay. I think uh, interest rates are, are likely to rise. There's something else I have to say here that I do. And, you know, I've told you what I actually have done with my money, but it's what I'm doing with my education. I mean, I am constantly reading a lot of research. And I particularly like to read research from people that I don't agree with you know, to see what it is I can learn from them. Mm -hmm. That's an old Sun Yet Sen thing about know your enemy, you know. It's not necessarily my enemy, but he thinks different than me, and he's a smart guy. Why does he think that? What can I learn from him? So I am relentlessly trying to learn more about what's going on in the markets, and that's actually more important than, than what I really do with, with my money. All right, so uh, the process of education never ends. Of course not. And, and it's, it's worthwhile. I mean, you could make a really fatal mistake, okay, by getting into the wrong thing and getting stuck into something. That's what I want to avoid. And, you know, maybe that's the, the reason, really, that I'm staying as liquid as I am, just to make sure I avoid making a real dumb move. And the flip side of that coin, too, though, Victor, is as the, the, it's never too late to begin to educate yourself if for whatever reason you've not bothered along the way so far. Well, I think if you're, if you're not educating yourself, you're going you're gonna to get stung. Our special guest this week on the Money and Wealth Show has been Victor Adair. And Victor, it's been a real pleasure having you on the program. I uh, enjoyed it very much and hope you come back for another visit soon. Thanks, Sterling. Pleasure to be here. Good afternoon. My name is Larry Ray. I'm the chairman and CEO of Mollycore Gold Corp. As the name states, we do have a deposit we're developing in British Columbia, which is a pure molybdenum deposit. But our focus these days is on magnesium in Nevada. Through serendipity, we discovered a large deposit of magnesium running about 10% with a high purity and consists of about 256 million tonnies at this time, 52 billion pounds. Our main emphasis is to move this project forward by beginning a drill program later this year in which we can increase the integrity of the resources into the indicated and inferred as well as increase the resource itself. For further information, please visit our website at mollycore.com or phone us at 604-531. 9639.